Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today for a non-beauty related video. I thought I'd do a tag really quickly that I've seen a few people do. Um, I've seen it float around. I think I've watched like three of these videos. Um, but this tag was created by Katie Marie. So I'll link it down, link her video down below. I haven't actually watched her video. I will do that after this. Um, but this is the perfect subscriber tag and uh, it's got 13 questions, but I thought I'll do this because I've just finished filming my one month, one palette conclusion, but I'm quite time poor this week. I'm going to Sydney tomorrow. My flight's at like 6 a.m. So I'll be there at 5 a.m. and leaving my house at 4.30 a.m. and whatever. So I know that I can't edit my one month one palette by the end of this week um, but I can edit this so I thought this is a nice little chatty one and instead of not having a video I'll do this one and then my one month one palette will be up probably on Tuesday. So I mainly wanted to do this uh, tag that's what it's called uh, because I'm tired um, mainly wanted to do this tag because um, I like talking about YouTube it's it's my job so I quite like, I like having the outlet to chat about it, but also like, this is my hobby channel. This one that you're watching is my hobby channel, but on beauty news, it's like my job channel. And um, when you do have a bigger sort of following, you tend to get a lot more help and advice from other, you know, YouTube and other places. So you learn things that I think a lot of people don't instinctively know as smaller channels, or just as being a subscriber. So I thought I'm, I felt like doing this from a, like a perspective of someone that knows a lot of the reason why YouTube does what it does. Um, but also I watch a lot of YouTube. So I am subscribed to a lot of channels and I've been watching YouTube for, I don't know, years and years and years now. So let's do it. So question number one, do you subscribe right away when you find a new channel slash video or try a few videos first? I would say it depends on the channel. Sometimes I'll find a channel that, um, and it might, not, it might not even be a small channel. It might be a channel with 15 million followers. I just never tried to watch them before. So if I find a channel that I watch a video and I'm like, I really like the personality or I really like the vibe or I really like the video content, um, often I will just start organically watching more videos from that channel. And then I finally decide to subscribe. So I think the answer is no, I don't subscribe straight after one video, but one video is enough for me to go into a bit of a um, sort of black hole of watching a lot of their content. And then I decide to subscribe or not. One thing I've noticed as well is sometimes I will find a channel and I really like a particular series they do, um, but they might have only done like five videos of that series. And then I find myself watching the five videos and when I realize that they haven't done one in months and months and months, I will have watched their videos but not actually subscribed to them. So I think it's sometimes important if you're a creator and you've got a really uh, series that a lot of people like to keep making that series because um, if I knew that like if someone was doing a really cool concept or a really cool video idea and they only had four of those videos up on their channel, I'm actually not going to subscribe to them. I'm just going to watch the four videos. But if I knew that they brought them out every month or something, I would subscribe because I want to see more of it. So uh, yeah, sometimes that happens as well. All right. Question number two, does the make sure you subscribe mantra ever sway you to subscribe? I'm going to say personally, no, but I have been a little less, um, I sort of am stuck in a little bubble of YouTube. And I really want to branch out of that because um, I'm sort of sick of like the content that I'm watching. But I find that, yeah, like I said before, if I see a video that I like, what will make me subscribe is looking back at their content, how regularly they post, uh, how often the content that I want to see is being posted. And that's what will make me subscribe. Um, but I do know for a fact that make sure you subscribe, that mantra does work. Now, um, the reason why I say that is because YouTube has done a lot of statistics and they found out that it really does help increase the uh, people clicking on your subscribe button. So um, I think this is where I was watching a few channels that are smaller channels. Um, the way YouTube work, works, which is a bit strange and it's, um, it's yeah, it's sometimes hard to wrap your head around, but when you create a video, it, say you've got a subscriber base of this much, whether it's a thousand, whether it's 10,000, whether it's a hundred thousand or a million. Say you, this is your subscriber base. Your video that goes out will only go to a portion 
of that subscriber base. Um, so it'll only pop up, you only get notifications for certain people. It'll only pop up on their homepage for a certain number of people. So it doesn't actually go to everyone straight away. Unless of course they go to their subscription feed and they scroll down and they look for you. But most people don't do that. I do that, most people don't do that. So a lot of people don't watch your video. So your video will only get shown to a smaller percentage of your actual subscriber base. Now, if that video is really interesting, so if it's one that there's a high rate of people clicking on it, so your subscribers, the ones that do see it, majority of those people click on it, then that will then be shown to all your subscribers. And then if all your subscribers also have a high click-through rate, then that will be promoted to people outside um, your subscriber base. So it will be, you know, the sidebar where it has like videos, suggested videos. So it will start being shown to um, similar sort of uh, channels or, um, you know, something that's related to it. And then if more people click on that, then that will be shown even further. So um, the, whole, the make sure you subscribe mantra isn't for the small people that are already subscribed to you because they're already subscribed to you. So a lot of smaller channels are like, it doesn't work. I don't see a benefit saying it because the people that you are saying it to are already subscribed. But if you have one of those videos that go through the motions and get promoted to external people, that's where you might see the benefit of it. So it's a good habit to get into, but it's not the be all and end all, but YouTube will tell you that it's one of the things that you should do. So clearly it works when it's the right circumstances have sort of um, come into play. All right, question number three, how many channels do you have the notification bell turned on for? And the answer is zero, not even beauty news, not even my friends. Um, and that's simply because on my phone, I have no notifications on except for phone calls and text messages. Um, and that's just because I like not being notified for things. I really like going onto YouTube when, I've, I, when I'm either doing my makeup or I've got a spare like half an hour or an hour or something. And I really like being being able to see all the videos that excite me. So I like them all being there. I'm like, oh, what do I watch first? I actually don't personally, though I just don't look at my phone very often um, and I don't like being alerted to things. But if you really like a channel and you do like watching stuff on your phone and you want to be notified, it is probably the best way to, uh, you know, figure out if that channel has put up content because um, like I was saying with the subscriber and the people that actually see your videos, um, you know, YouTube doesn't promote your videos to all your subscribers. So if you're a subscriber that loves a video or loves a channel, make sure you do get the notification so YouTube are aware that you're one of the people that want to see everything. Question number four, do you watch every video from your subscription feed or only your favorites? Um, I don't watch all my videos because I'm subscribed to like over a hundred channels and I don't have the time to watch them all. But also there are a lot of cases where I um, have subscribed to a channel because I either used to really love them and I've sort of gone off them, but I don't want to unsubscribe. Or it might be, like I said before, a channel where I like a particular series of theirs, but I don't like the rest of their content. Like I'm thinking a good example is uh, First We Feast. I like hot ones. So every week I'll watch hot ones, but I don't want to watch their other cooking stuff. So I don't watch everything um, and I don't even just watch my favorites. I just watch certain things that interest me at the time. And depending on um, my mood, it, it might be, it, that varies month to month or week to week or even day to day. Okay, question number five, how many channels do you never miss an upload for no matter how busy you are? Now, once again, if I'm really busy and I'm not on YouTube, um, I will catch up like the next day or the day after. Um, and I usually never miss an upload from only a few channels. Um, either there are a few channels that I feel like I get good information from. Like I like watching Philip DeFranco in the morning. Um, I like watching soap making tutorials if I want to wind down and sort of chill. And I also like watching my friends. So those are the ones that I sort of at the moment, at this very moment, um, I tend to go back and I'll catch up on if I've missed something. Um, but I don't count like the channels that I'm like, I have to watch everything. And if I don't watch everything, I'm a bad subscriber. Um, I just watch them as I see fit. But I do like being able to go back and catch up on things that I've missed out on if I've been busy. Question number six, what kind of commenter are you? And I'm gonna say I'm a non-commenter. Um, I am one of those sit back and watch. 
Um, and that's mainly because I like to do watch YouTube while I'm doing my makeup and I like to, it to be sort of like passive, sort of there entertaining me while I'm doing something else. Um, I don't, I'm not, I don't need, I don't feel the need to comment. And I know that that is like, I used to comment a lot. Um, but now if I do want to comment anywhere, it'd be, I'd prefer to comment in like reply to comments that I've received. So I put my energy into replying to comments and answering questions rather than commenting on other videos, but um, it is a good thing to do. And if you've got a smaller channel and you want people to sort of engage with your channel, um, definitely don't do the subscribe to my channel or I do similar content, check out my channel. Don't do that, but definitely, um, you know, comment on videos and get engaged and build a network. And that is definitely helpful if you're starting out. Question number seven, do you skip ads or watch? Now, this is an interesting thing. Um, I know that there is this mentality that if you skip ad, if you skip ads, you're not a good viewer. If you don't skip ads, you are like dedicated. Um, I found out a few months ago that whether you skip them or not, the YouTuber gets the same amount of money. So if you are able to skip them, do skip them because there's no point sitting around watching ads um, if you don't need to, but ads are important to help pay YouTubers bills. So um, I will not download something like ad blocker because I feel like uh, the only time something annoys me about ads is when someone's got heaps of ads in their videos. And then when I get to like the second or third ad, and if it's like a, not even a long video, like I think of, um, like Shane Dawson puts a lot of ads, but his videos are like an hour and a half long. So I can sort of forgive that. But if you're watching a 15 minute video and it's got eight ads in it, after the second ad, I'm like, no, nah, I'm out. And that will actually stop me from watching the video. So, you know, there's a fine balance between, you know, not trying to use your subscribers as cash cows, but also um, try to make YouTube as a, like, not like a viable sort of, hobby or job. Like I, there's a balance, but you can skip the ads. Question number eight, do you speed up videos? Um, I never used to, but recently I have been speeding up videos. Um, and I, for some that I like sitting and listening to, and I like the pace of them, I won't, but if they're long videos, um, and I sort of just want the information or I want to speed through something to get to a part that interests me, I will. So there is an option in the um, settings that you can like, I think it's like 1.25, then 1.5 double speed, or you can slow it down. Um, and sometimes when I'm trying to gather information for beauty news, I'll actually slow down videos. So if someone's talking about something really fast and I want to grab screenshots, I'll slow them down. So I, I do both. I do both. Question number nine, do you click affiliate links or use affiliate codes? Now the answer is yes. Um, I don't usually click affiliate links, not out of principle because, um, I'm fine with affiliate links. I think once again, it's not costing the viewer any, it's not adding money to your cart. If um, it's just, it's almost like a, yeah, a referral fee. Like, um, you know, you've brought this person to my store. So here's a little commission for doing that. And it doesn't actually cost the purchaser anything. So I'm not opposed to using them. It's just that where I usually order my products, I, there are no uh, like uh, affiliate links to. So Mecca Cosmetica, Sephora Australia, um, these sort of sites don't have affiliate links. So um, I know that Sephora US and Canada do, Australia doesn't. So um, yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I just shop from places that don't really have them, but I do use affiliate codes. So um, I try to pick codes from people that I want to support. Like um, if I wanted to order from Morphe, I won't use Manny MUA because I'm like, I actually don't think he needs more money and I would prefer my money to go to someone else. So I will look and do a bit of research at who's got the affiliate code that I'm interested in because it saves me money. If it makes someone else money, go, go you good thing. I want to buy it anyway. So um, yes, I do use affiliate codes. Uh, question number 10, what's your preference when it comes to video length? Uh, what's your like sweet spot? Um, I would probably say my sweet spot is probably 20 to 30 minutes um, because I find more and more there's less videos that really interest me these days because I feel like I've seen most things. Um, and when I'm sitting down to do my makeup, 
If I'm doing quick makeup, it takes me about 20 minutes. If I'm doing more in-depth makeup, it's like 40 minutes. And I only really want to put one video or two videos on. I don't like having to put a video every five minutes. It drives me crazy. So um, probably I prefer longer form content. Um, and then if it's even beyond that, I'll either click out when I've had enough or I'll come back the next day and finish it off. So long form content doesn't bother me, um, but probably my sweet spot is like 25 minutes maybe. Okay, question number 11, do you thumbs up most videos? Um, I thumbs up videos uh, from my friends and they're probably, if I, if I watch my friends' videos, sometimes I'll put a quick comment in there as well just so they know that I've watched it, but I do sort of straight away thumbs up videos of channels that I'm trying to support. But uh, what a lot of people don't realize as well, and once again, this is, you only learn this when you're on the back end, uh, thumbs upping or thumbs downing uh, content doesn't actually mean anything. Um, when the engagement that YouTube needs to know that that video is popular and should be promoted um, is uh, views like who, how many people click on it, how long you watch it for is probably the most important, and commenting is also important. So those are the things that tell YouTube that this is an engaging video. Thumbs up and thumbs down is just a way to report back to the channel creator that you do or do not like their content. So the people that, and I've had this a lot um, in the past, people that just come to your channel and then all of a sudden, like the video has been up for 10 minutes and they're like five people have thumbs down your video. And you know that someone's trying to like sly you. They're trying to like, oh, I don't like you. I want to sabotage your video. Does jack shit. Good luck to you. All it is, is a like a way for the audience to tell me um, that this many people liked your videos and this many people didn't. It actually has no impact on the success of the video. So do whatever you need to do. And question number 12, do you ever thumbs down a video? The only time I thumbs down a video is if I've clicked on a video that I think looks really interesting and then it is sort of clickbait. It doesn't actually ever get there. Um, I feel like I've had to watch 15 minutes or skip through 15 minutes of crap to get there. Um, I will sometimes out of frustration thumbs down a video. It's very rare, might happen like once every six months or something, but it's more as a, once again, an indication that I'm telling that channel I don't like what you've done. I feel like I've wasted my time watching your content. And question number 13, do you ever share YouTubers videos on social media? So I think this might be referring to like the share thing, the share function. And the answer is no, I don't. Um, on my personal social media, um, like my Facebook account, for example, I don't post anything. If you're actually friends with me on Facebook, you'll know that I maybe once every six months will post a photo of my cat or a group photo of friends, like from a wedding, but I don't really share much. Um, I, yeah, it just doesn't, it's not, not what I like doing. Occasionally I will, uh, and this is very rare, but I'll occasionally share or like share a video that I really like on Instagram stories or even the community tab on YouTube. But once again, that's really rare. It's gotta be something that jumps out as being, yeah, it's gotta be a video that for some reason, I think it's relevant to share to my subscribers or to my followers. Um, and yeah, it's not that I'm opposed to doing it and I probably should do it more. Um, it's just that I don't find the videos often, like if someone was just like, oh, this is a get ready with me, I might go, oh yeah, it's a good video like, watch it, make sure I watch it all the way through so I know that's good for like the watch time. But I don't feel the need to be like, hey friends, here's a get ready with me. Like if, unless it's something really insightful and that I've learned something from or I found it really interesting, um, I don't actually feel the need to share it. All right guys, so that was a relatively quick tag um, or relatively easy for me to edit tag. That was the main thing. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about it because I have watched you know, a couple of these videos and I have noticed that sometimes people put a lot of emphasis on things that don't really matter. Um, so like watching an ad all the way through or being upset if someone thumbs down that does a thumbs down in their video. And I just feel like going, look, yeah, I know that sucks. And it means that someone wants you to not succeed, but in reality, it's not gonna stop you from succeeding. So um, yeah, those are sort of uh, how I interpret those questions and my behaviors based on what I know as well about the, you know, behind the scenes of YouTube. So anyway, I'll leave it there and I'll see you guys next week for my one month, one palette video, which will actually be makeup related. Hooray. All right. See you guys then. Bye.